Hi, everybody. We're going to do a brief video here so that I can show you how to choose your template and get it set up for your patient newsletter service on Constant Contact. So go ahead and log into Constant Contact, and you'll come to this starting screen here. And you will go up to Email, which is the tab here at the top, and I'm going to click on that. And that takes us to a screen where you will be able to choose on the right this button that says Create an Email. And through this process, we can choose a template. Now, there are a lot of templates in Constant Contact. The one that seems to work very good because of its layout can be found under Healthcare. So I'll just type Healthcare into the search box and hit the little glass there. And that brings us right to this template named Healthcare. And I'm going to select that. And then what we need to do is change it, the name of it. This name up here, right underneath Customize Your Email, is just for your own reference. Nobody will ever see that name. So I'm going to call that Newsletter July 2013. Those are just my initials. I'll click off of it. Keep in mind that the system files these newsletters in your email alphabetically by the very first letter. So if you're going to have multiple of one kind of item, it would be good to use the same naming sequence so that you can easily find your emails later. You can hit Save at any point. I like to hit Save periodically so I don't lose any of my work. One thing you'll notice about Constant Contact is that you edit everything in sort of block format here. And you have to click on each section to edit that section. So just starting at the top right here, this header is where you would edit the subject of your newsletter, who it's from, the email address it's coming from, and choose a reply to email address. You can also customize your social share links right here. And when you're done, just hit OK. This first section right here is the title block. To edit any block in Constant Contact, you simply click on it, and it will open up a dialog box right here where you can format, choose colors and fonts. You can even come in and customize the code by clicking this little HTML icon right here. You can change this to be whatever you want it to be. And once you're done, you either hit Save, or if you've made a mistake, you can hit Cancel and come back in to do it again. This little bar right here is the date block. So you would click on that, and you can customize if it, there's an issue number, the month, the year, etc. This main image block is where you can put any image you would like. You can even put your own header in there. A lot of people will put their own header up here in the title block. And that's whatever you choose to do, however you want to set it up. This first block right here is an introduction block. Anytime you don't want a block there, you can simply click on the little X to delete it. You can easily insert another block. Um, and you do that by coming to the left menu here, click on Blocks. And there will be a number of blocks that you can insert. If you're not sure what it does, just click on it and see, and then you can always delete it out if it's not the kind of block you wanted in the place that you wanted it to be. Every block in Constant Contact can be moved just by hovering over this little cross icon right here. You just pick it up, and you can move it anywhere you want to move it to. Some folks keep this introduction block. It's just a way to say, hi, hope you enjoy the newsletter. It doesn't have to be very long. It could be a summary of all the different articles, however you want to use it. It has a field right here. You'll see in these parentheses where it says contact first name. If you have set up your contacts within Constant Contact to have a first name, last name, and email address, then it simply will insert their first name here. If your contacts do not have a first name, then it will not. And so you wouldn't want to put that in there. You would change that to maybe dear friend, or you might even take out the greeting altogether. Now, let's 
go through the process of doing one of these article blocks. So the first thing you do is hover over the one you want to change, click in it, so we get the dialog box. You can bring up or have open the text files that you get that have all of the articles. And what you'll notice in here is that there's an image link at the top, and then there's the title, there's the body of the article, and then there are the references that come at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight this title right here, and I just highlight it, and then I'll copy it. And then I can go back to my editing here, and I'm just going to highlight this article headline, right click, and hit paste. And now it's taken that title that I copied from the text document. Then I'm going to do my image. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in. You don't take image link colon. You just take the URL starting at the H and ending in the JPEG right there at the end. I'm going to copy that. Go back over. Now here's where the image section is. And so there, if you hover over it, you get that little wheel with a drop-down arrow. So you just hover over that, and you go to Change. And it's going to bring up a box that will let you paste that URL. So you have My Library Stock and Image. We'll click on Image. I'm going to paste the URL right in there. You can hit Preview. It'll show you what it looks like. You can change the size of it. You could put a link in here. So if it's an image of a product that's on sale, and that will come in other parts of your newsletter, you could just make a clickable link. But this is the image for this article. So I'll hit Insert, and it shows up right there. Most of our articles do not have subheadings, so I'll just highlight that and delete it. And I'll delete it again. I'm going to go get the rest of the text, which is right here. I'm going to take that whole section there, and I'm going to copy it. And I'll come back over, and I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to paste it. And now we have the text. I forgot to hit delete. The text of the article is all in there. Everything's done. You can format this however you want. I like to make my reference line bold. I don't like to have spaces, so I'll just go there and delete those spaces. I do like to have these bulleted, so I'll highlight them and bullet them. Now, if something crazy like that happens to you, just put your cursor there, and you can uh, back it up so that it doesn't do that funny thing. Sometimes it does that. And we'll put the P back in Dr. Pizzorno's name. I'll do the same thing here. This is good for you to see this because you might run into some of these formatting issues. And that font looks different than the rest of the font. So I'm just going to change it back over to Times New Roman. If you get anything else funny that happens, like the colors change or anything like that, you just come in and you just play around with the fonts and the things there. Sometimes when you're pasting into any program, it can lose its coding, and you might have to uh, mess with it just a little bit. But it doesn't take too long to get it looking the way you want. The other thing that you can do, and which a lot of our doctors do, is they customize this to make it a little more personal for them. So what you will notice about all of our articles is that we always direct people back to check with your naturopathic doctor. So in any of the articles, if you see that, it's, it is important to seek the assistance of, you can change that to your name. So we could say, check with Dr. Camp the next time you're in the office for any questions you have about detoxification, etc. Once everything is the way you want it to be, you just hit Save, and that article is done. And you repeat that for each article. If there are not enough articles in the newsletter, you simply come over and you add 
a new article block. And when you hover over the left-hand menu, you just hit a plus, and it will add a new article block. So now you can see there's three. Once you've gotten all of the articles in in the same way, you want to make sure that you have your left side of your newsletter all customized the way you want it to be. And so first, I would recommend you start the table of contents. You click on that. And you can see here that you just simply put a check mark and you put your the text that that link is going to say. So this first one, Spring Cleaning, is right here. So you just highlight it and you would change the name of it, Spring Cleaning. And you could have Inside and Out if you want. You do that for all your articles that you've pasted in, hit Save. And then you'll see that it updates to where it says Spring Cleaning. You can uncheck anything that you don't want a link for. The only way to get a link is if you have a section for it to link to. This is your own mailing list. You can click on it. You can edit it and choose different things. You just have to play around a little bit. Here's the wheel to change. And there are other options in there that you can choose that are maybe a little more appealing, visually appealing, however you want to, to do that. and then. Your featured article block over here, a lot of people use this for the recipe, and you do it the same way. You click on it. You've got the drop-down box here, so the recipe comes with an image. Then you can paste your image in there. And let's say that you've got some products on sale. This section here is called a featured article block. So the ones on the right side in the main body are article blocks. The ones in the menu are called featured article blocks. I would come over here and just hit a plus. And then you can edit it, change anything about it that you want. You can change the title up here like that. Um, maybe you have announcements or an open house or um, any of the following. Once everything is the way you want, you just go down here to the bottom, decide how you want to sign your newsletter, if you want to put your contact information in there, etc. All of your unsubscribe information will show up here automatically at the bottom because you had to give all that information when you opened your Constant Contact account. And you can decide if you're going to have a coupon at the end of your newsletter or not. If you don't want it, you can simply delete it. Once it's done, you hit Save. That's going to take you to a screen. Oh, sorry. Then you hit Continue after you hit Save. It will take you to a screen where you're going to schedule. So this is the scheduling of your newsletter to go out. And of course, the subject you've already filled in. Then you have to choose what list it's going to go to. You just click Add Edit. It will bring you to your list of all the different contact lists that you have. And you can choose them off that list. You can change from and reply to email addresses here. You can also do your sharing, social sharing here at the bottom, right down there, simple share. When you're done, you simply hit schedule. And I cannot schedule it because I haven't picked a list. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty smart. It won't let you mess up too much. And I'm going to schedule, and it'll say, when do you want to do? Send now, send later. If you click send later, it'll let you schedule it out. So you can set up several things to go out all at one time. And that's it. And then you're done. You send it out. The next time you come in to your Constant Contact, and you sign in, and you go to email, that email that you created will be here in your email list. And you'll notice that I just clicked email there to get here. And then instead of having to redo that each time with all your links and everything, you simply can go and you can copy it. So I've got a annual meeting notice here. I could go over to Actions. I could choose Copy. And then it will create a copy for me that I can then edit with most of the features done. All I would want to change at that point would be any specials, 
any dates, and then of course the content. But the image will be there, logos will be there, my contact information, and it saves you a lot of time going forward. So it's really the first one that takes the most time. Okay, that's it. Thank you for joining me, and good luck. Call us if you have any questions.